Boker Tov and welcome. Today we're going to discuss how to stop feeling overwhelmed. I'm going to be preaching to the choir today. Today is Yom Hamashi and this is the fifth day of the week. My name is Ann Elliott and I'm the creator and founder of homeschoolingtorah.com. Yeah, I'm the one who needs to hear this one. So I'm just going to start in. I've been reading in the Torah portion, and before the Ten Commandments, when we get to Exodus chapter 16, so this is before Sinai, they have come out of Egypt, they've gone across the Red Sea, and now they've camped. It's been about a week, and they're running out of food, and you can imagine a million people are getting very hungry. It's seriously a dire um, situation. So I'm going to start reading in Exodus 16, verses 1 through 5. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. Okay, so it's been a while. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to, to them, If only we had died by Jehovah's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then Jehovah said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Now I'm going to stop there for a second because I want to explain what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing that these people remember when life was easier, not, not as hard as it is right now. I'm seeing that they're hungry. They have real physical needs. I mean, yeah, we, can, we, we fuss at them for grumbling and we think, oh, I would never grumble that much if I were out in the wilderness. But really, they were in need. I mean, maybe they were looking at their children and they were seriously afraid that their children were going to starve to death. They had true needs. And yet, Jehovah said to them, I'm going to test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them gather only enough for that day. So, when we're feeling overwhelmed, I think the first thing we need to remember is that Jehovah promises to give us only enough for that day. Enough provision, but also only enough temptation. Not give us any more than we can handle, it says in the New Testament. So, um, I think sometimes our brains get going at least mine does, maybe in the middle of the night, and I start to think ahead, far into maybe the next few days, maybe even the next few weeks, maybe even I think over the whole year, I think back to the past of what it used to be like, and when I start to do that, the anxiety just builds up inside of me, and I, I get so afraid of what's going to happen in the future, and so longing for what has happened in the past, my anxiety increases, my peace and my shalom are gone. And I think Jehovah does this to test us, or he allows it. He never, he never actually is the one who brings temptation into our life, but he allows testing so that he can see if we're going to trust him or not. I'm going to keep um, reading. I'm going to hop on down to verse 16 of chapter 16. Um, Moses was talking to the Israelites, and he said, This is what Jehovah has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs, Take an omer, which was a basket of measuring, for each person that you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little, and when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as he needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. Now I'm going to stop there for one second, and I'm going to say point number two. Don't keep any of your troubles for morning. Just as Ephesians tells us, we are not to be angry um, and not let our anger go until the sun goes down. We are also not to let our worries and our anxieties be kept over until the next morning. We are to be, we're to be only thinking about the trouble that is for today. In Matthew 6, 34, Yeshua tells um, his disciples, Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. 
Each day has enough trouble of its own. So when we're starting to get an anxious, we need to remember that he has given us enough for that day. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more from Matthew 6, I think. I'm going to read chap Matthew 6, verses 25 and 20 through 27. Therefore, Yeshua said, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, this is a key verse, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Down in verse 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I, I have a, um, beside my desk, and maybe you've seen it in some of my videos, I have um, um, our Avinu, our, our Father, the prayer that Yeshua um, taught his disciples to pray each day. Our Father who art in heaven, may your name be set apart. Um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we pray that each morning, we are committing our day to him. Give us this day our daily bread. See how it, the, it's the same all throughout? Now, I wanted to go back to Exodus 16 because I also know that on the Sabbath day, they were told to gather twice as much, but they didn't listen. They just didn't. They didn't go out that on and gather twice as much, so then when they went out on the seventh day, on the Sabbath, there wasn't anything left for them to gather. Um, it says in verse 21, so, 27 some of the people went out on the seventh on the seventh day the sabbath to gather manna but they found none Jehovah said to moses how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions bear in mind Jehovah has given you the sabbath that is why on the sixth day he gave you bread for two days everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh day no one is to go out so the people rested on the seventh day you know, I, found, I, I looked in scripture and there are a lot of things Jehovah gives us and they all seem to have to do with rest. First of all, um, Yeshua said in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 33, he said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, my Torah, my instructions upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. His instructions, sometimes we think, if I keep Sabbath, if I keep the commands, if I, if I don't do this, if I don't do that, if I don't follow the rest of the world in, in disobedience, then something terrible is going to happen to me. And he says, no, no, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, and I will give you rest. We have to trust him, I think, is what it comes down to. I want to finish out... Um, in Ecclesiastes 2, 24 through 26, and listen for something else that he gives us. It says, A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. Today's work. Not tomorrow's work. Not yesterday's work. Today's work. This, too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth, kind of like a gerbil on a wheel going around and around in circles. He gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. God gives rest. He gives wisdom, he gives knowledge, he gives happiness. And you know what? Maybe sometimes we need wisdom to actually know how to go about our day. There's a place for scheduling. There's a place for planning. I'm not saying that, but there is a place for asking wisdom when the job is too big and we can't, or we're starting to see our, our thoughts going beyond today. And, and that's when James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and does not upbraid or, or look down on them and it will be given him. I fear overwhelmed today. I want you to take some time just to get away with your father and say, I'm sorry for thinking about the past. I'm sorry for thinking about the future. Help me to trust you. Help me to gather enough only for today to do my work for you. 
and I ask you to give us this day our daily bread. And then when Sabbath comes, which is just another day away, I'll prepare ahead and then rest. You'll want to go. You'll want to keep moving. You'll, you'll have things to worry about, but rest. Trust him. See if he'll hold true to his word. And take and fill your heart. Instead of anxious thoughts, he'll fill your heart with peace. And I know that's a peace that passes all understanding. We'll see you tomorrow.